Hello guys, welcome back. My name's Nathan and today we're going to be taking a look at the worst draft mistake for every single NHL team's history. Now, draft mistakes. Pretty much every single team in the NHL has made their fair share and some pretty bad ones over the years. And then you look at the Detroit Red Wings and it's like, if they don't get nerfed soon, I'm just going to have a heart attack. And then you look at teams like the Edmonton Oilers and there is a lot more draft mistakes to go over. Now. Who do I see as the worst draft mistakes in NHL history? And what do I see as the worst draft mistake for every single NHL team? Watch till the end for all my picks and all the draft mistakes. And of course, hit that big red subscribe button for more ranking content just like this one. Now, I've already done quite a bit of one through every NHL team videos throughout this offseason, and a few people suggested in the comments in the last video to do reverse alphabetical order rather than just normal alphabetical order. So we're going to start out today with the Winnipeg Jets and work our way down to the Anaheim Ducks, last but not least. And starting with the Winnipeg Jets and their worst draft mistake, I have Jack Roslevic 25th overall when they could have had Sebastian Ajo at 35. Now, one of the rules I have is that it's just the picks that this team has made in their current situation. So for the Colorado Avalanche, I'm not counting what picks the Quebec Nordiques made or anything like that. What picks that current franchise in their current place has made. And for the Winnipeg Jets, who have only been a part of nine drafts, there really isn't too much to go off of. But obviously, Rosovic is a solid player. And I don't really blame Winnipeg too much for this because there is a 10-gap difference. But having Sebastian Ajo would be amazing for Winnipeg right now. And him alongside Patrick Laine would be absolutely nuts. Then going on to the Washington Capitals, this one is a lot more far back, but in the 1980 draft, they had the fifth overall pick and selected defenseman Darren Betch at sixth overall. You had an, a decent player in Paul Coffey going to the Edmonton Oilers. Now, if the Washington Capitals had Paul Coffey, that makes their whole situation in the 80s that much more interesting and makes the Edmonton Oilers dynasty potentially not as much of a thing. They probably still would have won a lot of cups, but maybe not as much as they did because Coffee was such a big part of that team. But him on the Washington Capitals would have been very interesting. I mean, Vetch was still a pretty decent player, but definitely not better than a guy like Paul Coffey, one of the best offensive defensemen of all time. Then going on to the Vegas Gold Knights, and I'll just get him out of the way. They really haven't made that many mistakes. I mean, they could have gotten used to any in the 2017 draft or 2018 draft, but Really, it's sugar. It's just picking hairs. It's nothing too major at this point. They've only been a part of three drafts, so who knows what will happen. They'll probably have a draft mistake out of these three, but uh, so far, looking so good. And going on to the Vancouver Canucks, and we get some, to some big ones early. Some big ones. And for Vancouver, there was a lot of options, but I think one of the most notorious ones was in the 1979 draft, where they could have had the potential captain in Marc Messier. Now, they have the 47th overall pick. Marc Messier would go 48th overall, and they would select Ken Alicott, who I'm pretty sure didn't even play an NHL game. Whereas with Marc Messier, he of course would go to the Edmonton Oilers, win all the cups there, and would later beat the Vancouver Canucks in the 1994 Cup Final, and win the Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers. But just imagine Messier on the Canucks. But hey, it gets worse, because we now go to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they had some pretty bad ones, but one really, really stuck out in their history. This one coming in the 1988 draft, where they could have had just an, an insane amount of elite talent. Now, in that 1988 draft, they had the sixth overall pick and selected forward Scott Pearson. Now, I'm just going to read out the next few picks after Pearson at sixth overall. Martin Jelena, Jeremy Roenick, Rob Brindamore, and Timu Solani. Toronto. That's all I gotta say. Next up, going to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and although their draft history has been great recently, they did still have some pretty big duds earlier in their franchise history. This first one, at least, coming in the 1993 draft, third overall, they selected Chris Bratton. Now, Bratton would be a pretty decent player career-wise, but the player that would go after him at fourth overall ended up being Paul Correa. And who knows if Paul Correa went to Tampa Bay if he would have been fully healthy throughout his career, but the point still stands. He was a point per game 
finalized in his career. And that's a player that, I, who knows, maybe would be still on that team in 2004 when they would eventually win the Stanley Cup. Maybe they win more Stanley Cups with a guy like Paul Correa. But that amount of talent that ended up being picked right after, not the greatest look for the Tampa Bay Lightning, but I think they kind of got the last laugh in the end too. Now two franchise Stanley Cups. Now going on to the St. Louis Blues, they had a couple of rough ones. Honorable mention goes to picking literally a nobody over Pavel Datsuk, back-to-back -back picks, but I think this one really does top it, I, I personally. It, it takes the cake. This one coming in the 1984 draft, and this was a little bit later in the draft as well. I think it was around the 50s, but they ended up selecting for Toby Decola. The next pick would end up going to the Montreal Canadiens, and they would be selecting goaltender Patrick Waugh. I mean, <laughs> imagine if Patrick Waugh went to the St. Louis Blues, and he could have been there for the Brett Hull run, he could have been there for all that different stuff. Who knows, maybe Brett Hull never goes to the Dallas Stars, and they never win the Cup in 1999. Then going on to the San Jose Sharks, this one also is pretty bad, dating back to the 1996 draft. They end up selecting goaltender Terry Friesen, and the next pick for the well, for the New York Islanders, would be Zdeno Chara. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about the prime of Zdeno Chara in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and him with Jumbo Joe, him with Patrick Marlowe in their primes, and just how different that San Jose team looks. They might have actually gotten over the hump and gotten to the Stanley Cup with a guy like that, and especially in his prime, that would have been a huge addition to that decor. So, Picking basically nobody over him, not the greatest thing to do in 1996, that's for sure. Then going on to the Pittsburgh Penguins, this one, like, they had some rough ones, but they were kind of all tied for really bad. I went with this one, but it's not good, folks. It is not good. They went with Brian McKenzie over Larry Robinson in 1971. Now, this goes a long ways back, and it was one of the first drafts, which means there was only like 15 teams in the first round. Yeah, it was really weird, but he ended up going to the second round. Larry Robinson was on the board. They ended up selecting Brian McKenzie, who would basically turn into absolutely nothing. And you, there was a little bit of a trend, especially early. The Penguins had some horrible draft decisions. And letting a guy like Larry Robinson, who would later become a Hall of Fame player, an awesome player for the Montreal Canadiens, not great for them either. Then going on to the Philadelphia Flyers, this one is definitely up there with the worst on this list. In the 19, well, yeah, in the 1990 draft, I'm sorry Flyers fans, this is not the greatest one for them. In the 1990 draft, they had the fourth overall pick and selected center Mike Recchi. And the Pittsburgh Penguins had the next pick. And I think you could probably guess who that guy was. No, it was not Mario Lemieux, for those who don't know. Um... He was, a, he was a player. He, he was all right. His name was Yarmir Yager. He really didn't turn into anything, though. Don't worry, Flyers fans. I'm just going to hide you from all that pain and misery. You're welcome. And now we go on to the Ottawa Senators, who have also had their fair share of draft mistakes, but nothing really comes close to the first overall pick in 1993 in Alexander Day. Now, obviously, I, I can't really say too much about Day that hasn't already been said. He still turned out to be a pretty decent NHL player in his prime, but that was just it. He was a decent, average player, and as a first overall pick, didn't really work out too successful. The next pick would end up being Chris Pronger, and then fourth overall would be Paul Correa. So the options they had too as well, first overall, didn't work out too well for the Sens either. Then going on to the New York Rangers, this one leaves some salt in the wound. In 20 or in 2006, they ended up having the 20 first overall pick, they selected Bobby Sanguinetti, who would play like 50 games in the NHL, like four of the New York Rangers and then some of the Carolina Hurricanes. The next pick would be Claude Giroux, and he isn't at that best NHL player level that he never really was, but around that level right now, but in 2012, 2014, where the Rangers were really, really close, imagining Claude Giroux on that already pretty great Rangers team is just mind-blowing. Imagine him, especially against that Devils team 
in 2012. Imagine if they had that kind of guy on their roster, how that series would have looked afterwards. But I'm not going to get too into it because I don't want to make myself sad yet. Then going on to the New York Islanders, I of course have their Ryan Strom pick from 2011. Now you could go also from Rick DiPietro, but that draft just sucked in general. So I, I don't know what the Islanders really could have done besides that. To me, Ryan Strom left the most potential off the board. Now, of course, they ended up trading him for Jordan Everly, which is still solid. But right after Ryan Strom, you had centers like Mika Zibanejad, Mark Scheifele, Sean Couturier, and also Dougie Hamilton on the board as a defenseman. The Islanders could have been really interesting, and especially with a guy like a Dougie Hamilton or a Mark Scheifele. Now going on to the New Jersey Devils, and I point to their 2015 draft as the draft that they left the most potential off the board. Now, they ended up selecting Pavel Zaka with the fifth overall pick, which wasn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, Zaka's a pretty solid player and a pretty good bottom six guy. But again, with that 2015 draft, with the players they left off the board, there was just so much talent. I'm not even going to mention the defenseman right after, but the forwards of guys like Rantanen that they just left off the board, Timo Meyer, the list goes on. I could basically list that whole first round as the guys they could have had. Going into the draft, Zaka was still looked at as one of the top players, but not fifth overall, and you could obviously see that pick kind of bite them in the butt, especially right now for New Jersey. Then going on to the Nashville Predators, this one is really fascinating. Now they end up having to the pick two picks before Henrik Lundqvist in the 2000 draft. They ended up selecting a goaltender named Yuri Pento. He would play zero NHL games. Meanwhile, Henrik Lundqvist would come out as one of the best steals of all time and become one of the best goaltenders of all time for the New York Rangers. Now, they already were going to select Pekka Rennie in their system, so who knows what would have happened then with Nashville. They didn't exactly need Henrik Lundqvist, but that team still looks better with a guy like Lundqvist and those or especially early 2010s teams and going into the mid 2010s when they were a pretty solid team with guys like Shea Weber, that would have been super interesting to see. And obviously the New York Rangers would be very worse off. Then going on to the Montreal Canadiens, they end up selecting Pierre Sevgeny at 51st overall in the 1989 draft. Didn't work out too well for them. It was a French guy, as, as good of a bet as ever, because French as in Montreal always work out. Two picks later, 53rd overall, Nicholas Lidstrom to the Detroit Red Wings. I mean, Montreal didn't exactly need him, but you could have had Nicholas Lidstrom in Montreal. That would have been interesting to see, and obviously Detroit would be a lot more interesting with those potential cup wins, maybe not as dominant. Then going on to the Minnesota Wild, there was really only one. They kind of missed out on Alexander Radulov, but for a lot of that time, it wasn't really worth it for them. It was looking like one of the bigger draft busts before he returned back to the NHL. The big one, though, is them skipping out on Carey Price. Now, they ended up selecting Pouliot in 2000, or yeah, 2005, and he was the pick before Carey Price fifth overall. And obviously, he was still a solid player, but you could have had Carey Price in the Minnesota Wild, which would have changed that franchise. That was exactly what they needed at that point, that franchise face, that dominant player. And just imagining him on the Minnesota Wild in those early 2010s, that would have been an interesting team as well. Then going on to the LA Kings, this one is a little bit more far back, getting to the 1981 draft, but this one is just bad. Now they have the fourth overall pick, Ron Francis would go fifth overall, and fourth overall they selected Doug Smith, who would be a decent player. But Ron Francis would be going on to be one of the best NHL players in terms of points career-wise, and one of the best players, the best player probably in that draft as well. Now, obviously for LA it didn't really matter too much because that team just could not get over the hump, but imagine Ron Francis on those 80s LA Kings teams, and then of course in the 90s when they had Wayne Gretzky. Maybe that trade never happens, but that's definitely something to think about. Then going on to the Florida Panthers, there was a couple of pretty major ones, but the biggest one I think is them selecting Radek Dvorak over Jerome Ginla in the 1995 draft. Now Dvorak would still become a pretty solid player and would be pretty good in his prime, but Jerome Ginla would become one of the best NHL players of all time, one of the most consistent goal scorers of all time, and be of course the absolute legend for the Calgary Flames. Meanwhile Dvorak would be a guy that just was good, but not at that elite level. Meanwhile, Jerome Ginla was obviously winning the Olympics for Team Canada. Couldn't get over the hump, but I doubt he does that either in Florida. 
uh, to be honest. Sorry, Panthers fans. <laughs> then going out of the Edmonton Oilers, again, there was just a bunch of options for this. But I think just the worst mistake, I'm just going to look at the 2007 draft for this. They had three potential awesome players they could have gotten. Now, in the first round, they selected Sam Gagne, who would still be a pretty solid player for them, but they would miss out on a guy like Jacob Voracek. And later in the draft, they would select Riley Nash. That would skip just over Max Pacioretty. He would, of course, go to the Montreal Canadiens. And then you have a guy named Kintar, or uh, Kitnar, who was selected over Jamie Benn in the fifth round in 2007. So just imagine that Edmonton team with Voracek, with Pacioretty, with Jamie Benn, instead of the players they got. I mean, do they ever be as bad as they were in 2011, 2012, maybe still in 2010, but that Oilers team looks a lot different. Probably is contending a lot more than they did back then. Then going on to the Detroit Red Wings, and as I said earlier, there really wasn't too much, but there was a lot more when we got into the past couple of decades. And the big one for me, was in 2016 where they selected Giovanni Smith. Now Giovanni Smith still could become something in the NHL, but they had a couple of players right after that pick who were looking pretty good. Right after, Samuel Girard to the Nashville Predators, and the pick after that would be Carter Hart to the Philadelphia Flyers. Imagine either one of those players on Detroit right now. I mean, Samuel Girard would be the best defenseman on that team. Carter Hart would be the future of the Detroit Red Wings and that franchise and that rebuild looks a lot different too. Then going on to the Dallas Stars, my favorite team, and there was some pretty good options, especially over the past couple of decades. The biggest one for me though comes in 2014, where they selected this random goaltender named Moran, who of course would never make the NHL, and the next goaltender selected will be Igor Shosturkin. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, folks. It doesn't get any worse either. Imagine this Dallas Stars team with Igor Shosturkin. They, they could transition from Bishop and Hudobin so cleanly. Yes, Jake Onger is awesome, but having Igor Shosturkin as one of the best young goaltenders would have been pretty nice as well, man. I, I would have enjoyed that quite a bit. And now we can go on to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And there's a couple of very interesting options. The one that I look towards the most, though, comes in the 2008 draft where they selected Cody Golubev. Now, Golubev would become an NHL defenseman not too long, though. I think he's now with the Detroit system. But right after that, a guy named Roman Yossi would get drafted. Not the worst thing in the world for the National Predators, and obviously they're thanking Columbus for making that happen, but uh, even though Golubev will be a pretty decent player, Roman Yossi now is winning Norris trophies, and uh, deservedly so. And that Columbus team, though, if Roman Yossi looks a lot different too. Do they ever get as bad to select a guy like Orensky? Do they ever trade for Seth Jones? We'll see, but imagine that Columbus team with Roman Yossi, it looks a lot different right now. Then going on to the Colorado Avalanche, I have, well, this one's too obvious. They were also kind of like Detroit where they really didn't have that many bad draft picks, but this one sucked. In the 2014 first round, they selected forward Connor Bleakley. The next pick would be David Pasternak to the Boston Bruins. And obviously a lot of other teams made that mistake in not selecting Pasternak higher, but the Colorado Avalanche had the worst pick of the first round by itself. Even if David Pasternak wasn't the next pick, he was the worst player selected in that first round. And I think the only player to not play an NHL game as so far in that first round. And then you have David Pasternak right on top of that, right after. And imagine that Avs team with Kale McGarr, with Nathan McKinnon, with Miko Ranson, and Gabriel Landeskog, and David Pasternak. It's uh, pretty decent. I, mean, I think that's a decent team right there. Then going on to the Chicago Blackhawks, there was really only one obvious pick. This one coming in the 1979 draft where they selected Keith Brown over Ray Bork. Now Ray Bork, of course, would become one of the best defensemen of all time with the Boston Bruins. Meanwhile, Keith Brown would be decent for Chicago, but wouldn't last too long in the NHL in his tenure was done within the next decade. Meanwhile, for Ray Bork, of course, he would just be awesome and would have been the defenseman that Chicago kind of needed. Then going on to the Carolina Hurricanes, this one is also just too obvious. Coming in the 2008 draft where they selected centerman Zach Boychuk, and the next pick will be someone you've probably heard about, that being Eric Carlson. Now Eric Carlson probably doesn't change too much with Carolina in the early 2010s because that team just consistently stunk, but my goodness. What the heck were you doing, Carolina? Now Zach Boychuk is just practically a meme, follows everybody on Twitter, and just is an absolute bum. 
Meanwhile, Eric Carlson is an absolute beauty and his hair is 100% grab approved. And next up, going to the Calgary Flames, this one also just is yikes for Calgary. In the 2011 draft, they ended up selecting defenseman Tyler Weatherspoon, who would play in the NHL, but not last too long. The next pick would be Nikita Kucherov. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Moving on. Now to the Buffalo Sabres. I have a little bit of a hard time really pinning down one. And this isn't really, this is honestly in terms of the value, not the worst one on this list by far. But I, I still think it could have been a lot better for them. Going to the 2014 draft, they end up selecting Sam Reinhardt second overall. And the next pick, of course, would be MVP, or at least future MVP, Leon Dreisaitl. Now, I... Bear in mind, I, I still think Sam Reiner is a pretty good player, great shooter, and I think a good option with Jack Eichel. But imagine the Buffalo Sabres with Leon Dreisaitl. We talk about the duo of McDavid and Dreisaitl as the top two centers there in Edmonton. Just imagine Eichel and Dreisaitl instead of McDavid and Dreisaitl. Then going out of the Boston Bruins, this one... I mean, there's one obvious option. We can look back to the 2015 draft where they left guys like Barzal, Connor, and Shabbat go, which is bad. But the Boston Bruins could have had Joe Sackick in the 1987 draft. They ended up selecting defenseman Quintal, and the next pick would be Joe Sackick, 15th overall to the Colorado Avalanche. That one would bite them a lot. And imagine that 90s team in Boston with Joe Sackick. It looks a lot better and a lot more interesting. And Colorado maybe never gets to the way they have. Who knows? But Boston definitely would rather have Joe Sackick at this point. Then going out of the Arizona Coyotes, I have them and their mistake in 2015 selecting Dylan Strome over Mitch Marner. Now, Dylan Strome is a, still a pretty solid player, but in Arizona's context, it's not looking too good. Now, they, of course, traded him for Nick Schmaltz, who's a decent player as well, but Arizona with Mitch Marner looks a lot better on those wings and looks a lot more offensively inclined. Honestly, if they select Mitch Marner and they go in that route, they probably never go with that pure defensive style, they never go with maybe never go Rick Tockett as their coach. They might not go in that type of direction, which it obviously worked more this year, but a team with Mitch Barner obviously looks better. I think the Arizona Coyotes would like to have that pick back. Then going on to our last team, last but not least in the Anaheim Ducks, and that's weird to say, but that's how we're doing it today, boys. This one was not too fun for the Ducks. Going back to the 1994 draft, they had the chance at Daniel Alfredson. He ended up being selected by the Ottawa Senators. They would select Bates Battaglia. Now, he would be involved in a bunch of trades afterwards, but the thing is, it was not worth the pick. I mean, that Anaheim team with, with friggin' Daniel Alfredson. We would see in the 2007 Cup Final, Anaheim would still later win it. But on the other side, the main star was Daniel Alfredson for the Ottawa Senators. Imagine if Anaheim had him as well on top of that pre-stacked roster. That is awesome to think about. And Anaheim might even win more, one more cup besides that too. He would be one of the stars there. And of course, maybe they don't get Corey Perry. Maybe they don't get Ryan Getzlaff. But hey, they'd have Daniel Alfredson. Not too bad, to be honest. But that is it for today. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the draft mistakes. Let me know down in the comments down below what do you agree and disagree with, what did I miss, and who do you think is the worst draft mistake for your favorite NHL team in their franchise history. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you've enjoyed today's video and want more content just like this one. Make sure you share this video with your friends. Get the draft mistakes out there and click on this card for all of my hockey ranking content content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. This video took like <laughs> two hours to research, but it was well worth it. Hopefully you guys enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.